when a recipe calls for cutting in, it means that the fat needs to be chilled. And the flour could be too, for that matter. Everything needs to be cold as possible to keep the fat from melting. So here I have chilled flour mixed with the leavening and the salt. And it's similar to what we would use for a biscuit or a scone. Self-rising flour may also be used or other baking mixes. They would already have the leavening included. The cold butter is added in small chunks for ease in cutting. And I like to use a paring knife to just cut the, the stick of butter into smaller chunks. The recipe will guide you in terms of how big the pieces need to be. Some recipes for pastries will tell you that the chunks of butter should be cut in, as I'm doing, until the mixture resembles pea-shaped sizes. Your goal in doing this is to keep the flour from being coated in melted fat. So that is why the, the cold butter or shortening is so important. Then when it goes in the oven and the fat melts, it leaves an air space and layers. You won't get this if the fat has already been softened and is too melted when you start mixing the flour with it. You can see the chunks getting smaller. This can also be done in a food processor with a few pulses. But it's really good for young people to just experience what it takes to make the product by hand. You'll cut the fat in then until the pea-sized pieces of fat show up in the mixture. If that's what the recipe calls for, it's time to stop right now. If it calls for a mixture that resembles cornmeal, then you'll cut just a little longer until it's finer yet. And this is typically what one would use for scones and some other quick breads.